Hello everybody, today I'm going to be talking about an issue that a lot of owners of these cars are struggling with, and that is the entire car. Kidding, kidding. Um, this is my family member's uh, BMW 335 IS 2011 model year. Um, it's got about 150k on it. Modified, abused, bit neglected, uh, but he loves it. It's his, uh, one of his dream cars. One of the issues that he's been struggling with is no bass in his stereo. It just sounds like uh, just very flat. There's no, no pop, there's no nothing in the, the sound system. A lot of the trouble codes on the car were saying amp. He's been struggling with this actually for about two years now. A lot of the people were saying that the amp is bad. The trouble codes were saying that the amp is bad. And uh, a lot of people neglected to check a lot of the shops that I took it to, including dealerships, overcomplicated things. They said, oh, this module's bad, this is bad, whatever. But they forgot to check some very basic things. And um, we're going to get to that in a second. Um, but uh, he ended up replacing the amp in this car. Which is right here. And as you can see, it says it's from a uh, 2012 750 Li or something like that. Um, people kept on saying that this amp is also bad. It must be that he just got a defective amp in his car. And... Um, you know, there's nothing really he can do about it. He's just got to get a new amp for another 500 bucks and then his problem should go away. So, you know, as a whole, the whole system in this car, to make the amp work, you know, you have to have the iDrive working properly. You have to have the stereo, the radio working properly. You have to have the amp that powers the sub, the subwoofers, actually, there's two of them. And, you know, all the cables have to, you know, be powered and, you know, transfer power properly. And so, you know, you got to check, first off, some basics. So, do all the fuses uh, work? Um, is the amp getting power? Is the amp emitting power? Um, are the speakers getting power? Is the subwoofers getting power? Are, you know, the subwoofers actually functioning? So, we check the fuses for the iDrive. We check the fuses for the stereo system and all the speakers. And everything was okay. It was about... Well, I don't know, 12 of them we had to pull out and, and inspect. Next thing we did is we went to the back and we checked if the amp was getting power. And then we also checked that the amp was emitting power, so input and output. It was showing signs of having input and output on the multimeter. And so that left us saying, hmm, let's go check under the seat, pull out the subwoofer, and see if that's working. And lo and behold, we checked it with uh, another sound system, just a random radio to diagnose it. And it turns out the speakers are dead. They don't work. The subs move freely, no problem, right? No problems there. But for whatever reason, you know, there's no control boards in these to fail, but yet they don't work. And so we looked a little bit closer. We found a very simple design flaw from BMW or Harman Kardon or whoever makes these these subwoofer units um, and that is that these cables are not long enough they don't have a lot of slack so if you know you're listening to a lot of high bass music the the lines gonna eventually wear out or snap or whatever because there just isn't enough slack in the entire line for it to move around freely and so it snaps and then you don't have sound at all. And both of them are like this and not on the same spot. These are identical units, but not on the same, not the same line snap. This one snaps over here and this one snapped on the other side. Um, and you would say, well, then how come it just all of a sudden failed? Why would it, why would both of these subwoofers fail at the exact same time? What are the chances of that? Well, it's more likely that one failed at one point and then the other one failed a little bit later, but you just, you didn't notice it because, well, it's still got some base, right? So all of a sudden the second one fails and then you're like, well, I have no base whatsoever. And then you say, well, I think the amp is faulty or, you know, insert other issue here that the car pulls up the fault codes. And as for actually getting the job done, it wasn't too hard after you diagnose that your amp is good, you got voltage in, voltage out, and uh, the cables are all good. Um, first thing you do, you gotta, you know, 
move the seat around so that you can get the four screws to the seat because the subwoofers are under the seats. Unscrew the four T50 bolts, lift up the seat, don't worry about the cable. Next thing, you're gonna have this plastic cover over here under the seat. You've got, I think, six uh, Phillips screws. Undo those. And then after that, you gotta pull the carpet out of the way a little bit because you're gonna have carpet here, right? Carpet here, you're gonna have carpet back here. And then you're gonna have two 10 millimeter bolts that uh, secure the subwoofer into the chassis with the whole boom box thing that you know moves the air around and after you do that then just unplug the cord that powers the subwoofer and check it out see if your subwoofer is also damaged in the same way that this one is because I would say that there's gonna be quite a few that are in the same quite a few subwoofers that are in the same sort of condition you also have to take out the speakers out of the enclosure as well so you're gonna have, after you pull it out of the car, uh, you do the two 10 millimeter screws. You have four T20s, and those you just you know undo it, pry it out, speaker pops right out, plop in the new speaker, and you're good to go. So once you put it all back in, um, there's no really major torque specs on anything except for the seats. You wanna make sure that the seats are properly torqued down. You want to torque them down to 31 foot-pounds um, and BMW says to replace the screws each time that you remove the seats. So that's an additional cost if you want to do it properly. Probably a good time to upgrade it. We just replace these with standard um, Harman Kardon units from uh, a used um, you know, parts store. They had These ones were from a different model because you can get these parts from um, a lot of different BMWs from this era, from like 2006, I think. BMW E65 was the first one to have it. And like X5s have these same subwoofers, um, 3 Series, the 5 Series, 6 Series, um, a lot of different cars from around 20, 2006 to 2015 use these same subwoofers under the seats. You can get parts pretty easily, um, lots of cross compatibility but other than that it's a pretty straightforward job other than the diagnosing part of what went wrong but again there's a limited amount of things that can actually go wrong in the system so um, it's not rocket science you just got to pick them apart one by one don't overcomplicate things and, and you'll figure it out some people already noticed this too I noticed in some of the um, forums from about five years ago on the E92 M3 forums that a lot of people also noticed that these speakers are pretty bad for this, you know, generation and model year of car. And some people still get confused by it. Some forums, they say, I have no idea what the problem is. And they, I think they still, to this day, don't have working uh, base in their cars. So thank you guys for watching. And um, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.